Okay, so the Picantico call for action, uh, it was convened by the Union um, of Concerned Scientists, the National Trust for the Historic Preservation, the Society for American Archaeology, and the J.M. Kaplan Foundation uh, Fund, and it was in collaboration with experts from the National Park Service, including Marcy, who is with us at the moment. And for those of you who don't know what Picantico is, uh, this is Picantico. It is the uh, former home of the Rockefeller uh, family. Uh, so several generations were brought up there. And a few, hi, Gary. And a few people, um, a lot of people, a large gathering of people uh, came to Picantico and spent uh, three days uh, trying to talk about uh, cultural heritage and climate change. Now, obviously, as there was over uh, 30 people there, this was very much a statement which was be has been made by a committee to a certain extent, but the sentiment is fantastic and much of the sentiment um, will be reflected in the talks that we hear today. And the idea is that at the end of my talk, uh, I'm hoping that some of you or all of you either individually or as organizations will think about signing up to this. But more importantly, if you have any suggestions for changes, because certainly there are a few uh, paragraphs within here which you might not agree with or which you might find difficult as an organization to sign up with, then uh, let us know. And when I say us, don't let me know, but let the Union of Concerned Scientists know. And the person that you need to tell is Adam Markham. Now. Um, you don't have to write his email down now because I've put his email on every single one of my slides. So if you get interested, you can write it down later. So you can save your hands. So here we go. The Pacantico Call to Action on Climate Impact and Cultural Heritage recognizes that cultural heritage is a human right and that the changing climate puts some aspects of cultural heritage at additional risk. Okay, now there's a lot of debate on whether it's a human right or not, but uh, there are several places where it is called, uh, where it is specifically stated that cultural heritage is a human right. So, recognize that neither the costs of addressing climate change impacts on cultural heritage nor the knowledge we gain from understanding our cultural heritage have been comprehensively addressed in climate change responses at any level. Now, this one is slightly more controversial because I'm sure that some of you will think that we are addressing this, but um, so if you want to think about changing that, that's fine. However, we recognize that addressing these gaps is critical to maintaining the vital legacy of cultural heritage and its ongoing contributions to the present and the future. Recognizes that an inclusive and informed network of organizations with a concern for cultural heritage, along with other interested parties, would advance the goals above. Okay, And in order to do this, the signatories have pledged to collaborate to help empower and support local descendant and traditional communities to maintain and preserve what they value, including intangible heritage and subsistence lifeways. And the whole community aspect is very central to the Picantico statement. So it's talking about climate change, but it's also talking about uh, local and traditional communities. The signatories pledge to ensure that cultural heritage voices and expertise are represented in climate policy discussion at all levels, from the local to the international. And of course, this is a time when we're just coming up to the Paris meeting uh, in December. So that there is a lot of interest in climate change and heritage at the moment. And it's up to us as heritage professionals to try and get out there and engage in this. And I bet, Mary Van, you were at the COP21 Paris meetings recently, weren't you? <coughs> we pledge that we're going to share the data and the information necessary to identify cultural resources at risk. And we're going to assess the levels of threat and we're going to prioritize action. And I think hopefully we all agree that that's something we should be doing. We're going to share our best practices and ensure that in tandem with the best available science, these are incorporated into cultural resource management planning and decision making. We're going to increase our own capacity to collaborate and share information wisely, efficiently, and without duplication. So this is all about all of us coming together as a community of, of archaeologists and heritage professionals. And then we are also going to direct significant research towards telling compelling stories that engage and inspire the public and their representatives. And this is something we're going to be hearing more about from Marcy later on. And we're going to try to increase public awareness of climate risk to cultural heritage and the array of potential solutions. And again, I think this is something that we're all working on at the moment. 
and we're going to try to attract the public and private resources necessary for climate disaster preparedness and community resilience. So, the call finally ends up by saying that we call on policymakers and government decision makers at all levels to support communities in planning for a resilient future, including making informed choices and assessing the costs of action and the failure to act. And this is a long one. We're going to call on individuals and institutions around the world to collaborate with existing communities to maintain and preserve cultural heritage through support of a number of community empowerment projects. And these projects will be models for how communities can successfully maintain their cultural heritage in the face of changing climate risks. We're going to ask the international community to provide resources and implement policies that lessen the harm to cultural heritage. We challenge these supporters to unite and share these lessons to increase the likelihood that communities become more resilient worldwide. And finally, we call on the cultural heritage community to develop an effective public communications campaign to build awareness and to mobilize action addressing the risks to our shared heritage. Sorry. That's OK. Hi. So we affirm our commitment to these goals, and we invite all individuals, organizations, and agencies to join us in this call. So this is very much aimed at everybody. It's not just the call of the people who wrote it. So if this is of any interest at all, please do get in touch with the Union for Concerned Scientists with Adam Markham. And I have a whole bunch of the statements. So uh, just managed to do a 10 minute talk, just reading one page, but here it is. They're all at the front here. So please take one of those with you. And uh, I hope that you'll either be able to change the, the, the sentiment a little bit, but also be able to sign up uh, either individually or as organizations. That's me finished with Picantico. Thank you very much. And I'm now going to hand over to Courtney, who is going to be running the...